So when you are creating an agroforestry system, when you're jump-starting that regenerative process, you might have questions. You might wonder, you know, am I doing this right? Is this really the right thing to do? Pioneers, target species, soil microbes, it can all get, sounds start sounding very complicated, yeah? Anytime that happens and you start questioning, I suggest taking a trip into the inspiration for all of these processes, which would be a little natural bit of forest. Um, on our lands, like I was saying, it was pretty degraded. It was pretty stripped down. So we've got some patches here that are naturally regenerating and that also have, uh, we've got one left. You can see it back here. It's massive. I'm going to show this to you guys. We've got one uh, primary forest tree left here on three hectares of land that was logged. It's just huge. This is the trunk. You can't even really see it. It's so hard to see behind all of this uh, growth and exuberant vegetation and orchidias and epiphytes that are growing all over it. But anytime you're looking for verification or uh, validation in something that you're trying in an agroforestry system, and you're questioning yourself, come into the natural forest for validation, to find the truth. So as I was saying out in the pioneer plot with the bananas and the cacao and the zapote and the coffee and the coconut and all the things we have going on, what I was saying is that it's not really necessary or even ever gonna happen that you're gonna build up a thick layer of topsoil in tropical or subtropical soil. And the reason why that is is because the rainfall, guys, is just so hard. There's so much of it. It comes down in such vast amounts and so hard. It, it, it just, it washes things away, okay? Um, so the roots of tropical and subtropical plants are very well adapted to the system. The plants are very well adapted. Everything is well adapted, which is why if you say you try to plant like a, pe a peach tree or a fig tree in a subtropical forest, it's not going to work out, okay? You need to stick to things that grow in these climates. So what I'm showing you guys here is that all of this uh, organic matter here that is very, this is all very, very close to the surface. You've got great mycorrhizal growth. You've got great fungi going on. You've got a lot of stuff that you would really be looking for in a fertile soil, but it just doesn't go that deep. It really doesn't. It goes down maybe like three inches if you're lucky, and then you hit clay, okay? Um, so the roots of these plants are extremely adaptive. If you look at this tree, this is a root, right? This, this is root. And it actually, a, a couple times I've been back here and I actually thought it was a snake, kind of like, and then I realized, oh no, it's just more of the root. There's another piece of it coming out of the soil. So in very large trees here in the tropics and subtropics, you'll find these roots that hump in and out of the soil like Loch Ness monsters. They keep the stay, they stay close to the surface because they know that's where all the nutrient cycling is going on. Okay? So you do have trees with deeper tap roots. They also send down deeper tap roots to mine rock for minerals, but a lot of the roots stay close to the surface. And that is so that they can take advantage of this constant cycling of nutrients that is happening on the surface. So unlike prairie soils, unlike grassland soils, where you have a lot of underground biomass, because the grasses are able to penetrate very deeply into the soil, and then every winter they, they die and they decompose there. We don't have that in the tropics and subtropics and neotropical forests. What we have is a very, very hyper-efficient cycling system that is happening much closer to the surface. And all of this biomass that's on the surface is what is very important to the health of the plants. So it's a very different system than a temperate climate system. And understanding it is really key to understanding why agroforestry systems function so well in subtropical and tropical climates, why their land equivalence ratios are so much higher than growing monocultures, and why this isn't really an appropriate climate for large ruminants, which can work very well in other climates in temperate and prairie soils. Um, here, to take away this canopy, to take away this growth, this uh, protection from the hard rains that helps to filter some of that rainfall, 
that helps to dilute the effects of what's called rainfall physics, that when the rainfall hits the ground really hard, it leaches everything out really quickly. So you need canopy to slow the water down. And then you absolutely need this layer of leaf litter here and this layer of biomass on the topsoil to have the microbial growth, to have everything happening here, right here on the surface. So ground cover and canopy are absolutely necessary, necessary in a tropical or subtropical forest system. So that's why agroforestry, if you want to grow food here, is really the way to go.